What is up guys, Team Yugi Fields here with another deck profile and I am posting an updated Ritual Beast deck profile. Now, I wanna preface this before we hop into the actual list itself. Um, I did obviously make you know some, some crazy changes or significant changes from the first profile. The only difference is, is that today I won't be showing a side deck. I feel that because I already showed a side deck, people can kind of get a grasp as to some cards that are helpful and things that, uh, that you can play to kind of supplement it in the side deck. Um, I did pull a good chunk of hand traps out of here because I needed the space to play the other combo pieces. So the hand traps can be side decked, um, like your good hand traps anyways, like Nibiru, things like that, uh, you can all toss into the side deck. But I'm not going to be showing one today, I just wanted to preface that before we hop into this, but I'm going to show you guys the updated main and extra deck for my Ritual Beast deck. We'll start off with the uh, Spiritual Beast. We have three Conahawk. He is your Gold Sarcophagus and kind of one of your, your engine starters in a way to start your combos. Uh, three Rampengu. Rampengu with Elder or Conahawk with Elder are basically the same combo and uh, end on the same exact thing. It's just really solid overall. So I would definitely recommend uh, playing three Rampengu so you could try and draw into it. Then we have the one Apelio and the one Petalfin. Um, I think that Petalfin is probably the worst of all the, the Ritual Beast monsters, um, but it's still necessary to play the one of. I, I thought about cutting it, but it just didn't seem right, uh, so I opted to keep it. Then for the... Um, the I call this the middle ground card because it's basically a tamer and a spiritual beast. Um, I'm playing three. I might cut it down to two, to be honest, because I want to try and squeeze uh, one other card in here, um, possibly, and I'm not sure. Like, I need to kind of, like, figure out where some wiggle room is. So I might cut this down to two. I might keep it at three. I'm not sure yet. Um, chances are I'll keep it at three, but it's just, uh, just a thought running through my head. Then for our Tamers, we have Triple Elder, which is pretty obvious. Um, basically, every deck needs to play three Elder. To when when is just ridiculously good. Um, I think that it's probably the uh, the second best um, tamer out of everything, and we'll get into some reasons why. I have one card in here that uh, I was recommended by. Well, I, I have a few things in here that I was recommended by people in my initial video, um, but I'm going to show you guys like the, the two cards that I'm playing that uh, I've been testing and having a lot of success with. Uh, we have one Lara. And one Zephyr Pilica. I'm still very 50-50 on the Zephyr Pilica. Um, it's not my favorite card in the world, but it's still pretty good overall. Um, and we do play the Oracle of Zephyr now to be able to get to it. Um, there's a lot of engines that I kind of put in here to see how it would work together as a whole. And so far it's working fairly well. The Zephyr Pilica I'm just kind of uh, biased against, but it does work. Uh, then this was a recommendation from a few people on the initial um, video was to play the Wind Witch engine. And I have found that this is pretty solid so far. Uh, your fifth summon, if you start with this, is your Crystal Wing. So if your opponent tries to Nibiru you, at least you have a negation on board, which is pretty good. Um, so definitely consider running this engine because putting out a free Crystal Wing and then having the possibility of comboing off after that just makes your end board that much better. Uh, really, really strong opening play. Then the other tech card, which I love so far, is Tempest. Um, so like, let's say you open up Tempest, Wen, and two other wind monsters, which is a possibility. Um, you could banish the two other wind monsters from hand to special this, then you can normal the Wen to summon one of the banished ritual beasts that you banished off of this, and uh, start your combos up. So Tempest is a really powerful card in this deck. Uh, does some insane stuff that I, I, I didn't even consider, even though I should have considered it of all things. Uh, then the only hand trap that we play is the Dimension Shifter, because this deck is fine without a graveyard. Um, um, the only card that's impacted by it would be your Tempest, but Tempest is one of, so you may not see it as easily as you'll see Dimension Shifter. And Dimension Shifter is only for two turns, so it'll shut off eventually. Onto the spells, though, we have two Brain Research Lab, one Oracle of Zephra, and one Terraforming. Um, so I really wanted to play Set Rotation, but 
I found that like I just didn't have the space to. I would have to cut the window and then I'd probably end up uh, cutting one brain research lab and adding in another field spell just to give me more options, probably like a mystic mine uh, or something along the lines of that. So I opted to just keep it at this for now. Um, but if you wanna make that change, you could pull one brain research lab and pull the window and then you could add in a set rotation and like a mystic mine or um, I think it's Gateway of Chaos, whatever the, the Black Luster field spell is, um, because that one also is, is pretty solid to lock your opponent out of their, their field spells on. Uh, for the other one ofs, I have the e -Tally, the Gold Sark, and the Dimensional Fissure. Uh, these are just really solid picks overall. Not too much to really say. I think that they're fairly standard in Ritual Beast lists uh, as a whole. It's just really, uh, really powerful to be able to draw some of these as your one card openers in addition to your combos. It just kind of supplements you uh, very well. Onto the traps though, we have three steeds and I'm only playing one ambush. Um, I felt that one ambush was fine. Typically I was only searching for steeds when I was doing most of my combos. And then like the end, I would grab like the one ambush. And you really only need one because like after you resolve the first one, chances are you're gonna have enough resources to probably OTK your opponent. Uh, so I just opted to cut the ambush down to one from two. And then the last trap card is one Macrocosmos. Seeing we're playing Dimensional Fissure and uh, Dimension Shifter, we might as well just play the Macrocosmos to have more banishing potential. Uh, so that's the main deck. I'm going to hop over to the extra deck. I believe the main deck is 40 cards. Uh, I, I really like this extra deck list so far. Uh, the only problem is playing the Wind Witch engine, you do have to kind of like compact everything down a little bit. Um, but it's okay in the long run because it doesn't really harm you that much. Uh, but let me just show what uh, what we've got so far. So obviously we're going to play the triple Conahawk. That's pretty obvious. I don't think much is going to really change from that. Um, playing three of this card is insane. You have the ability to obviously banish it off of Rampangu as well to dump a Conahawk and continue your plays. Uh, so playing the triple Conahawk is definitely helpful. Then I play two Apelio. The reason that I'm only playing two is because of the Wind Witch engine. I had to cut one to make space for cards, and uh, I'm definitely not regretting it so far. Like, the Ulti Apelio is just really solid at two. You really don't need more than two of it. Uh, I opted to play one Ulti Petal Fin. I did not want to play two of this card. Like, after, like play testing with my first list i found that there's no reason for me to play the second one even for like the uh the rampangu combo it's not worth having a second one in here uh just it, it it takes away a spot that can be used for more important cards two ulti guy palio before i was trying three of the regular ulti palio and one ulti guy palio but i found that i wanted to banish one uh, Guy Pelio for the Rampangu effect, so I opted to play two of this and two of the uh, the regular uh, Ulti Pelio. And the Link Monsters, I am playing two Kamuni Falcos. I think that this card at two is just overall really solid. Uh, same thing with the Ulti Guy Pelio. I feel that having two of it is just probably your best ratio. And then for the other Link Monsters, I play one Nightmare Unicorn and one Access Code Talker. Um, the access code talker will obviously be pumped up pretty high and then you'll be able to pop two cards because you'll have a dark and a wind engrave uh, which is just overall really solid so i definitely recommend the access code talker uh, alongside the uh the phoenix and the kamuna falcos and then for the wind witch uh synchro monsters i guess you would call it even though i'm not playing the actual wind witch synchro monster i play one wind pegasus at ignister one clear wing fast dragon and one Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon. I did not want to play the Wind Witch uh, Synchro. I wanted cards that gave me more utility and ways to play around my opponent's board. And uh, I'm not trying to go into time excessively. And even if I was, I still get to burn my opponent off of the Ritual Beast effects by the, I'm sorry, the uh, Wind Witch effects by themselves. So like, I'm already burning them for some points, which should be more than enough if I'm going into time and time is called on my main phase. Um, so I just wanted to, you know, put that perspective out there and show you guys that it's not something that you have to do. I think playing the Fast Dragon and the Adagnister, the Wind Pegasus, is just a significantly better uh, route to go because of the 
accessibility that it gives you to popping cards in your opponent's field and negating cards as well. Uh, so that is the extra deck. So that is basically the updated Ritual Beast deck profile. It's operating a lot better than my first list was, so I'm thoroughly enjoying it, and it gives me more options to kind of do different lines of plays, as well as bust out some different combos if I don't draw into the Ritual Beast cards that I need. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button and keep sharing. We had a phenomenal month last month. I got an email from YouTube saying how I did and we were boosting those numbers through the roof. So let's keep it going, guys. I appreciate it so much. And this is Team UU Fails signing out.